very good video. I really enjoyed watching it. Uh, very thoughtful and uh, completely devoid of anger, actually, which was a, a very nice thing to see. Um, I approached the matter of a race-based underclass, uh, which you describe, um, from a historical perspective. I'm a history nut. And when I look at the problems that certain underclasses, race-based underclasses, have, I ask myself, what were the historical processes that landed these people in the situation they're in? For example, um, everything that you sort of uh, ascribed to an Af a certain African-American race-based underclass in the United States, uh, I could just as easily ascribe to a another race-based underclass in Canada, uh, the Aboriginal Canadians. Uh, addiction, violence, uh, petty crime, incarceration. Uh, I sometimes get the impression that they're actually an even worse state than African-Americans are, or at least the African-American underclass. <coughs> And I ask myself, how did these people get into that situation? Um, and I don't want to say whose fault it is. That isn't how I approach this. Um, my uh, outlook is, what were the processes that ultimately resulted in these people being in this situation? In the case of the Aboriginals, I think that it was simply a case of extreme, profound, and total disorientation culturally upon the arrival of uh, the Europeans. Even if the Europeans didn't want to harm the Aboriginals, I think that their very presence and their, their capacity to completely change everything about the, uh, the Aboriginal's life and outlook and society in, in a way that the Aboriginal simply had no means to even comprehend, let alone withstand, resulted in this underclass being created, a bunch of people that simply cannot cope with society on what we would call the normal terms. There are Aboriginal people actually who do uh, cope quite, quite well, but unfortunately your eyes tell you something when you walk down the streets of many Canadian cities. Um, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I don't think that the African Americans' experience would be similar to that. And again, I'm not approaching this from a blame issue. I'm not saying whose fault is this. What I'm saying is is that the African Americans' uh, present condition, um, or the tendency of some African Americans to uh, exist as you describe them, uh, can be. Uh, explained by the deleterious ex uh, effects of slavery and what came after it. <clears throat> um, and again, I'm not saying that that the African American underclass is the fault of the white man. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that the historical processes that were followed resulted in a situation that couldn't be other than it is today. Uh, when you're going to enslave people, you have to break them. Uh, you have to, if you understand how slavery actually works, you have to completely destroy them uh, mentally, uh, emotionally. You have to rape the women. Preferably you gang rape them. You have to m sexually molest the children. You have to do this. Now the reason why you have to do this, you have to physically brutalize them as much as possible. Uh, because well, the <clears throat> natural tendency of any human being is to see himself as really no different from anyone else. So why am I a slave? <laughs> you know, why, why, why should I be in this position? So in order to get a person to sort of accept their own enslavement, you have to do this. You have to destroy their family structure. You have to you have to, uh, they would even call it seasoning, I guess, or breaking when, uh, when the Simon Legree type characters um, uh, were basically unleashed on the new arrivals, the Africans who, who had arrived, and they said, okay, we've got to completely destroy these people. Because then, once you've done that, once you've wiped their, their, their sense of self-esteem completely out of their minds, <clears throat> Then if you treat them with little kindnesses, but still with the threat that that could come back, they actually feel grateful. But the problem is, in a, in a way, they're not fully human anymore. So you've, you've created this large mass of people 
whose job is to work, whose job is to basically do whatever they were told. You'll see that the reason why African Americans were subjected to this uh, was the fact that if you look at them physically, uh, it's, it's the only race of people that are physically as big as white people on earth. If you look at anyone else, Arabs, uh, Asians, whatever, um, they're the only race that are actually, some even some white people even believe that, that African Americans are physically imposing and intimidating. But So that's exactly why you enslave them, because they can, they can stand the conditions of plantation existence. And the plantations in the United States were bad, but the ones in the West Indies and in Brazil were living hell beyond imagination. Um, <clears throat> so you've got this, let's say, half the population of the Confederacy, I think, something like that, uh, what was the Confederacy, basically have been deliberately destroyed, not out of a sense of malice, but if you, if you accept the, the, um, the logic of slavery, you have to do this. You, you almost, it's almost like the, the, the slave owner had no choice but to brutalize his slaves. Otherwise, slavery couldn't work. So the, the first problem was that you accepted slavery. Now, you abolish slavery. That's fine. But you suddenly, they don't have the structure that they've always had. It was a horrible structure to be in. But the white population fears them, terribly fears them. And I can tell you that that is still the case today. Um, and the fear, of course, leads to the hatred. Now, it's not an easy thing to get past this. Uh, and, and again, what I'm saying sounds like I'm saying that it's all the white man's fault. And I'm not saying that at all. It's, it's the result of historical processes, uh, decisions made a very long time ago. But again, as you say, if if you're being treated like a piece of human excrement, perhaps you start to believe that you are that way. And perhaps you start to act like you are that way. And so it, it's a vicious circle. Um, that's my take on, uh, on, the, on the underclass. I could go on about this for a very long time, but uh, 10 minutes, I suppose, is the limit here. Uh, very good video and very thoughtful. Thank you.